Now that the next stage after booster set is completely revealed and already released in Japan, we can now start to discuss which clan won the set. Hey Garfanos, welcome back to another card for discussion and this time we're gonna talk about that age-old question again Who won this set? And this episode is gonna be dedicated to the next stage extra booster set This set that brought us Tri Tree, so support for Gear Chronicle, Neo Nectar and Royal Paladin Altmal, Asha and Chrono Jet And we already discussed the trial decks two weeks ago So if you're interested about that specific topics when we went over the trial deck cards Then I encourage you to check out this video right after you watch this video of course. So in this particular discussion we're not going to refer to the cards from the trial deck as we already discussed in the previous episode about those cards in particular. We're going to rate these new cards by how they perform in standard as well as in the premium landscape but not only at the moment of release but we're also going to look at their future potential if there's room to grow into more powerful versions of themselves right now. And all these factors combined will dedicate how powerful this set was and who will eventually win this set in my opinion and eventually in your opinion as well. And stick around to the end of the video as I will put up a poll where I want to know what you guys think personally about who won this set and we can discuss the results of that poll at the end of the video. And of course leave a comment down below with the reason why you think a certain clan won as those comments will be showcased in the upcoming video as we're discussing the poll results at the same time. So with that introduction out of the way, let's jump right into the content of this video. And we're gonna start off by discussing the new Royal Paladin support and analyze what they have to bring to the table. So we already had the Alt Mile trial deck, which introduced us to the Alt Mile and Live Rod, which were an interesting take on the new mechanic for Royal Paladin, which focused on putting everything face down. And we got a small taste of what it has to offer. But with the new support cards within this set, everything was cranked up to 11. The new VR alt mile is insane as it supports our grade 2s to the maximum capacity as it makes them powerful beaters, great interceptors and potentially gives them extra crits which is insane to think about. But on top of that it has a recursion skill which also filters through the deck. So you're starting to get insane pluses out of nowhere, which is even better than a trial deck version of Altmal. The only difference is of course that the Altmal one puts them to hand and that means you could get some more value out of cards like Liverat or you could fetch out the Order Grade 2s. But in this case, this Aerial Divine Knight Altmal doesn't do that, but you get way more value out of the card. So it's... It's justified for the reason for that. But on top of all that, Royal Paladin got some insane early game support that allows them to be very aggressive and some insane consistency card in the likes of Suleiman, which is a top seven searcher for an alt mall, and you can call it, have some extra attacks, and then you can bounce it back, which is insane. So you get some good value out of potentially your Twilight like alt mall, as it could be a very solid beater in the early game. But we got all these other cards of the grade twos and grade ones that can bounce cards, so you can place cards early very aggressively and then bounce them back to hand so your opponent cannot damage deny you and give you more resources for the following turns which is pretty good as a force clan wants to be aggressive right at the get-go and with Altmal being such a powerhouse in the mid to late game is a very deadly recipe but on top of all that they got one of the most impactful grade twos you can think of as with starlight violinist you can turn every grade two into a booster and a back row interceptor and this complements insanely well with aerial divine knight's alt mouse passive ability as that allows you to get some insane power columns and basically have 50k shield onto the board as you can have five grade twos and all of them can intercept and all of them are 10k shield. So this new Altmal deck is a very fine balanced strategy as it is some early game potential. It has consistency options. It opens up a lot of possibilities as you can combine with any grade two out there what Royal Pattern previously got support. So we're going to see a lot of old faces returning to this deck, but it's super aggressive and also high defensive at the same time. So it almost has no weaknesses to it and that makes Altmal a deck to be feared once this set drops in the English format as it's a really powerhouse to reckon with. But on top of that, 
Royal Paladin also got support for his other archetypes as we got new blaster support, two new grade twos, which are actually pretty damn good. One of them allows you to potentially multi-tag with your Messianic Lord Blasters as after the uh, battle it attacked, it puts itself potentially in the soul so it opens up a rearguard spot for you then to call it Messianic's drive check skill, which is pretty damn good. And they also got another grade 2 that is a search anything blaster card which substitutes for any grade 1 or grade 2 or whatever you want, which is pretty damn good. And then finally they also got a nice grade 1 supporter for Alfred. It is basically Basically a weaker version of the generic grade 3 searcher but the difference is that this card potentially pluses you outright as you don't have to discard so it can be a good early way play if you don't want to commit cards from hand and you basically don't want to discard anything. And what's great about most of these other support cards that Altman also got is that a lot of them are generic so it can be utilized in any Royal Paladin deck. So these cards that bounce cards back to hand can be utilized in something like Soul Saver or Alfred or Blasters or maybe the upcoming builds that we're going to see with Future Set, even with Genslot for example. So maybe you want to protect your Blaster Blades or something like that. So there are some interesting potential within this support for Royal Paladin and they really stepped up their game from the previous support web as it's super generic, it's a powerhouse to reckon with, and the only negative part you could say about Altma is that Ariel Divine and Altma's main passive ability is a little bit slow as it's your second grade free turn if you can rewrite for the crit. But even then, it's pretty damn fine if you ask me. Now from Royal Paladin we dive straight into Gear Chronicle and Gear Chronicle I discussed about them many times on the channel in the last couple of weeks and you probably have heard about them many many times on the channel so I'm gonna go fast and basically they got some good cards for Chronojet as we've got the best restander in the game in Chrono Dragon Next Stage as it's the freest restander it gets extra power and it's just a free attack. We never actually got something like that so it's pretty damn solid. Then they got a super amazing grade 2 in the likes of smoke your dragon which up the consistency of the chronojet build to endless possibilities it's such a good card but then we basically stop as sure we have chronojet dragon which itself is also a pretty insane card but we already discussed about the trial deck and we're not taking that in consideration for this one so there isn't really anything left. We have the great free search of Chronojet Dragon in, for Steam Fighter uh, Bali, but it's not an ideal card to run in Gear Chronicle as you're already running a couple of X's Great Force. However, if you want to play a Chronojet specific build, you're probably only going to run four next stage or maybe only three next stage and one or two other Great Force. So you might have room to actually play Bali. They also got a very nice generic uh, grade 4 in the likes of Isolate Lion, which can help you with Bali or with Chronojet or with any other support uh, archetype that you want to play. Then we basically had everything set, as all the other support, the generic support, are either distributed for some random things that we can do, or there are extra bind support for Mystery Flare or some discard synergy for Chrono Tiger Rebellion. But most of them are actually pretty lackluster and probably won't see the light of day anytime soon. So it's sad to say that a lot of these cards aren't actually that good and most of the support cards for Gear Chronicle are in the two Chronojet support for this set and that's about it. We do have the new generic grade free search which honestly is the best grade free searcher so far as it pays its own condition for the extra additional 5k power which none of the other cards can do so that's pretty good. But sadly, we got way too many clunky cards like the Melon Trio, for example, in standard that isn't really that great as we cannot capitalize on it for now. So sadly, it doesn't really provide to us a lot. But when we take a look at Premium, for example, that this story changed uh, to a whole nother level as the fact that we have Chronojet... And we have these cards with Melon and the Melon Trio that can interact with the old Elite Four. It suddenly opens up a lot more plays. And we're starting to see a lot more potential for it. But then again, the main bulk of the support for premium lies in the fact that we have a Chronojet Dragon Vanguard. But Chronojet Dragon, once again, is from the trial deck and not from this set. And within this set, we don't really got a lot to offer for the premium side besides Smoke Gear Dragon. As Smoke Gear Dragon can be an excellent grade 2 for the premium landscape as well as it's a continuous ability to discard for grade 3s synergized with the stride cost as well so it does have some applications in that regard but the biggest selling point for this set for gear chronicle what is basically their saving grace is 
their future potential. Altmau is very powerful now, and its grade two engine will make it future proof to some extent. We're all, always going to get grade twos, but if Royals is going to focus on a new boss unit, then there is a chance that Alma will just be disappearing or they're going to rely only on the VR, which is pretty good and can be splashed in any build, which makes Royals pretty damn good. But Gear Chronicle with Chrono Dragon Next Stage is on a whole nother level of future proofing because it's the freest restender. It can be splashed in any build as long as you also run Chrono Jet and Chrono Jet Dragon has the pseudo stride skill so that means you probably can run it as a support grade 3 if you also are relying on the other main grade 3 strider. For example, if you run Chrono Fang, you want to run Chrono Fang and then go to Rebellion. But if you happen to run one or two copies of J Jet, you don't really mind to go into Jet if it at least ups the consistency that you go into grade 3 and then into grade 4. And from a Jet, you can immediately go into a next stage, which allows you to play that engine. You can also splash this in Mystery Flare, as for Mystery Flare, don't really care which grade 3 is your strider. So it suddenly is a whole nother package, and that is Gear Chronicles saving grace, that it's super generic, and it allows them to be splashed in any future build and can only become better and better from this point onwards. So even though their cards in this set aren't really that great, aren't really up to snuff, as their good cards are limited, their future potential is endless. And then of course we get to the last clan which is none other than Neo Nectar. And Neo Nectar got some insane new cards in this set as well as we've got the new VR Dreams Ranunculus Dream Spinning Asha which is pretty damn strong as it allows you to really capitalize on the power of your tokens with the additional power and crit. But there is a problem with this card and it really really relies on that you're gonna run multiple Ashas. You need to have to trial the grade 3 as well because if you don't then you lose out on the crit in most cases and if you do then the power level of this card is significantly lowered and you might as well just play the trial deck asha as that is to some extent maybe even better or has more options available to it but that said the support in this set for asha is insane as we got multiple cards that allows us to stack more power onto the vanguard we've got cards like enterald which is insane if we could flood the board with some tokens and we've got some other interesting cards that could benefit from your token generation or the whole flower fairy asha token mechanic but but with that said, this set is also really awkward with Arsha to some extent, as the mechanic of the Flower Fairy Arsha tokens, it allows you to copy the Vanguard's name. So you have multiple units with the same name on the field, which will interact with some of the new cards in, that introduced within this set, as well as Neutralic. But the problem is, is some of those cards are grade 3s or grade 2s or they get boost. But Arsha Flower Fairy token cannot be boosted, so you already are losing out on the value aspect of that side. And then because you want to call multiple Ashas to the field, so you're already going to call a trial deck rate free Asha or maybe another copy of the VR, you probably cannot really utilize all your other powerful grade freeze like Ines to some extent as you're already packed with your grade freeze and you want to run all the support cards around Asha. And because of the limitations within this whole flower fairy token of the Asha generation, it makes it really awkward to slot in powerful cards as sure, we got cards like the new Anelma, which can turn everything into a booster. But what's the point of turning everything into a booster if we cannot boost our side columns if we created these tokens? So you can start to see what the problem here is. And the general support, we got some new token generation, which could be nice for premium. But some of them are a bit overcosted, or we started to see more counterbalance and soul blast attached to these token generation as they also gain maybe more power or they can do other stuff. And that might not necessarily be ideal for the premium side, as you rather want to have this cheap generation of these as you rather want to have these cheap token generations than have some extra additional cost attached to them. And I'm honestly not really sure how powerful of an increase you're going to get for premium because the deck already does what it does. And probably within the sport, one or two cards will be added that generates another token. So they have more ammunition to do their Katrina plays. But will that actually make the deck stronger? Probably not. Maybe more consistent or you have more options. So the chance that you're running out of your ammo is going to decrease. But if it actually makes the deck better to some extent... I'm not really sure about that. But for that, I honestly highly recommend you guys to check out Can You Say Jesus Blocks as he's doing an entire series about this new support for New Nectar. 
He is probably way more experienced and has way more expertise to talk about Neonectar in detail, especially in the premium side. So if you want to have a better understanding and a better glimpse of what this set could provide to you or provide to Neonectar, then I highly recommend you guys to check out this blog. And I will put this link to its blogs in the description down below if you're interested in that. But for me, honestly, I see their potential standard. They're really powerful. But in premium, I don't think they're going to really bring a lot of leeway to it. And with that said, because this token mechanic is really awkward to some extent, I don't really see a lot of future potential to this card unless they print specifically token support for this Arsha Flower Fairy token that maybe it changes its interaction with boosting or it could be put onto a separate rigor circle, for example, so you can still utilize your other cards or something else that makes it a little bit better than just Powerhouse that copies your Vanguard and that's about it. Because the deck is very one-dimensional after you start playing with it, after you've done your riddle. And that is, to some extent, a negative part. But the upside is to Arsha in comparison to Chrono Jet Dragon and Altmau, is that Arsha is the fastest out of the three. Altmau needs another Altmau and Assault to get his full power. Chrono Jet needs to be waiting till your opponent is also grade 3 so he can go into next stage. Arsha can just go into the new VR right from grade 2, call an Arsha grade 3, call, create the token, and you can go wham. So yeah, that's the big difference between the three clans. So now that you have a basic understanding and an overview of what these clans have to offer, now let's, we come to the point of where we're going to rate these clans. And it's really, really hard to actually pinpoint their exact position, or at least to say for the second to third place. Because the, the one on first place is very obvious, and I think a lot of people immediately know which clan I'm referring to that is gonna win this set. So let's first take a look at second and third place. So you could say that Gear Chronicle is on third place, but honestly, and I'm not trying to be biased here, yes, I was really hesitant on putting them onto second place, but I would actually put them on the second place and put Neo Nectar on third place. And the reasons why I put Gear Chronicle on second place for this set is basically the exact same reasons why I put Neo Nectar on the third place because their points are in a negative of Gear Chronicle's positives. So first off, Gear Chronicle support might not be strong. They're absolutely not the strongest set in this. They are absolutely not the strongest cards in this set. I'm not gonna argue with you with that because that's a fact. But having the strongest card within the set doesn't necessarily mean you actually win the set. Because you're forgetting that we also have this whole support that came before it. As that is what we're interacting with. And also with the potential what comes in the future. And on both that aspect, I think Gear Chronicle, especially this Chrono Jet build, is pulling way more value out of it. As Chrono Jet Dragon, together with Next Stage, is such a generic engine. They are so powerful that they can be splashed into anything. We never actually had a free restander like Next Stage before. We always had to do some excessive cost or do some wacky interaction or we need to set up things up like with Clarissa Dragon, which is not a minus, but we need to build our entire deck accordingly to fuel and accommodate for Clarissa Dragon. For Chrono Jet and Next Stage, we don't. We run one or two Chrono Jets, we run one or two Next Stage, and you're done. That's it. Done dilly do. So that's a huge thing. But also, we got cards like Air Cup and cards like Chrono Tooth T Guard that synergize insanely. We can actually plus off of the restand if we discard something like a Chrono Tooth T Guard. And we can give her Chrono Jet Dragons some insane extra dry checks. And with the Guard Restrict on top of that makes it a deadly OTK turn that can be splashed in any build. So we shouldn't underestimate that value. And then, of course, the future potential, because we can splash it in any build, means it can only become better. There's no way that you can say that it would be removed from the deck. Sure, it can be power crept, but if it is being power crept, I'm fine with that. But it doesn't have to be. We can go to something else, and this can just be tagging along with it. So... That is a giant plus that Gear Chronicle has. And in Neonectar's case, their problem is, is that they really cannot abuse a lot of older cards. This token generation is really, really secluded to its own thing. They need cards that interact by powering up the Vanguard, because if they don't, you don't get the value of the tokens. You need to run enough Arsha so you can get more value out of your VR Arsha, to run this Dream Spinning Arsha. But besides that, that basically stops 
what the rest of the deck can do because you cannot boost you cannot really utilize your great ones or powerful units and your token generations aren't really that impactful the only reason why you're actually going to use them is either so you can power up with entero or you can suck them off to create the new asha flower fairy token and that's about it and just like i said in the premium side one or two cards will probably be added to the premium deck but that's about it the Arsha Trial deck, Great Free, can be utilized and maybe one or two of the new token generation within the set can definitely be incorporated within the premium deck. But it doesn't revolutionize the deck to some extent, as maybe one or two things will change, but nothing major. And for Gear Chronicle, on the other hand, they get Chrono Jet! That's basically enough to say that they won that part for premium. Sure, they're not going to be top tier or anything, but the jump of power they're going to generate is way more than Neo Nectar gets of one or two of the token generation. So I think for that regard, I am deciding to put Gear Chronicle on the second spot. But to be fair, you can swap these two very easily. You can say Gear Chronicle's third and Neo Nectar's second, and you can say Neo Nectar is third and Gear Chronicle's second. It depends on your personal view and what you decide is a much bigger factor to this. And now because we know who is third and second, we know who won the set, as that is of course Altmal. And for obvious reasons, this is an insane support card for Royal Paladin and just the entire set is insane. The fact that we can utilize our great tools to some extent to such an extent is insane. The raw value the deck generates is through the roof. And it pulls out from all the way to the back to the beginning of the VR with all the cards. We can see the return of cards like Akane and Pongal or even Thunagal or all that kinds of wacky cards that either didn't see play anymore or never actually saw play like Lamorock. And that is really great about this card as it allows you to do all these crazy kinds of things. And it also has some really solid future potential as you don't really have to run the trial that great for your Alba to get the value out of your Aero Divine Alba. Sure. You want to potentially have the crit as well, but it doesn't really need it to put out a lot of pressure. Meaning, if Royals goes to a new boss unit or a new type of playstyle, you could still splash in one or two, or maybe allowing Aerion the Divine Knight Alma to be your supporting grade free, as it's still synergized with the entire thing that Royals want to do superior and calling units and mainly grade twos. And the fact that its shield value will also still apply if you call them from hand is pretty good. So you have a very strong offensive and defensive card in one. And that is always pretty damn solid. So that's why for my final standings and for my reasoning, Altmal won the set. But now I basically want to know what you guys think of who won the set or at least what your standing is. Do you think that Arsha won it? Do you think that Chronojet won it? Or do you think that Altmal definitely deserved the number one spot of the next stage extra booster set? I'm very curious of your opinions about this set as I think a lot of people will agree with me that Altmal won the set. But I'm also curious of do you think that Chronojet is second place or do you think Arsha is second place? And also... Describe why you think that. Uh, give a good argumentation to why the reasoning behind your opinion about it about that fact, as it is interesting to discuss about that and to see what you guys come up with. Last time I discussed the try three trollics, and to nobody's surprise, you guys were basically in sync with my opinion, as Altmal won the vote by 50%, and then Arsha to some extent was pretty close, and Gear Chronicle was just dangling behind, and I actually Surprise, it almost got 10% of the votes, which is way more than I honestly thought, as the trial deck for Chronojet was pretty bad, and the only actual saving grace was Chronojet Dragon himself, which together now with Dr Next Stage and Smoke Gear is a very solid engine that can be splashed in any build, and we have to wait to see what the future potential holds for that. And it's not surprised that still a lot of people d decided that Arsha has some uh, moving power to it to be the number one trial deck out of the free, as it is a powerful engine with a token and can just beat out of nowhere if you can set up your board and potentially build up two tokens as the trial deck Arsha is a very powerful house, powerhouse and combined with the Power Rise Elixir can do some nasty things if you hit one or two critical triggers. But of course I'm curious of how these polls will stand if we discuss about the try free extra booster set. So 
Once again, let me know in the comments down below. And of course, vote in the poll of who you think is going to win this set and why you think they won the set. As always, this video has been brought to you by our lovely patrons over at patreon.com slash Insider. You guys are amazing. If you do want to support the channel or everything that's happening on the channel, then head over to patreon.com slash Insider and become a patron today. But with that said, I'm Mr. Timely and I'll see you guys in the next one.